Okay, so the other type of vector multiplication that we need to talk about is what's called the cross product. Now the cross product is sometimes called the vector product. Because, whereas when you did the dot product, the final answer was a scalar, when you do the cross product, the final answer is a vector. So these are two very different types of, of multiplication and that they actually give you answers that are different types of, um, of mathematical things. So again, we're going to have two sort of definitions here. We're going to have a geometric definition and we're going to have an algebraic definition. So we'll do the geometric one here first. Um, and to talk about it geometrically, we have to because this is a vector that we're getting in the end, we have to talk about both its magnitude and its direction. So we'll talk about the magnitude first. The magnitude of the cross product of, again, we'll use u and v, is given by, just say is, I'll say the magnitude of u cross v, okay? So we'll use the this x symbol or this standard multiplication symbol to mean the cross product. Okay. So the magnitude of the cross product u cross v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times sine theta, where of course theta is the angle between the vectors. U, so we'll just say the angle between u and v. So this is the magnitude of our resulting vector. What about the direction? The cross product always produ produces a resulting vector that is perpendicular to both of the original vectors. So the direction of the resulting vector is perpendicular to both original vectors. And it's perpendicular to both of them in a very specific way. If we're doing u cross v, say so that u, v, and u cross v, so u cross v is the resulting vector, they have to form a right-handed system. What does that mean? Okay, it means that if you are doing u cross v and you sort of take your right hand, your right hand, you point your fingers along the direction that u is pointing. You've got v that is placed tail to tail with u. Okay, you rotate your hand so that your fingers now point along v. Your thumb points in the direction of the resulting vector. So that's forming a right-handed system. So if we've got two vectors that are, let's say, in our, are in the plane of the smart board here, U and V, we've got them placed tail to tail, 
Okay? We take our fingers, we point them along U, okay? and then we rotate them so that they point towards V. So along U, rotate them so they point along V. Our thumb is pointing in the direction of the cross product. So the cross product in this case would have to point into the board. So U cross V is into the board. Now, this is tricky, okay? Dot product works perfectly well in two dimensions, okay? You can take a two-dimensional vector to the dot product with another two-dimensional vector, and you end up with the scalar. Cross product only makes sense in three dimensions, because if you've got two vectors that are in one plane, the cross product can't be in the same plane. So you need a, a 3D coordinate system in order to even start being able to do this. All right. okay. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. In both of these examples, we want to find A cross B. So the first one here on the left, we have got, uh, we're given the magnitude of A is 120. The magnitude of B is 100. The angle between them is 60 degrees. So the first thing we want to find is we want to find the magnitude of A cross B. Okay? And that's pretty easy. It's just going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle in between them. Magnitude of A is 120. Magnitude of B is 100. And then we want to multiply that by sine 60 degrees. We punch this into our calculator and we end up with 10,392. That's our magnitude. What about our direction? Well, let's see. We want to apply our right-handed rule. So we take our hand, so it, our fingers point along A, and then we curve our fingers to point in the direction of B, and our thumb is pointing in the direction that A cross B has to go. So my thumb is pointing into the board here. So the direction is going to be into the board. Okay. Or if you're writing this down, you could say it's into the page. Now, if you want a symbol that represents into the board or into the page, this is sometimes used. Okay. If you imagine your vectors are all... Um, arrows with tips and tails. This is like the tail of the vector here. It's like the fletching on the end of the arrow that you can see. Okay, so that would be into the board. Let's take a look at the next one here. We've got um, vector B has a magnitude of 5, vector A has a magnitude of 10. Again, we've got the angle between them. They're placed tip to, uh, sorry, tail to tail, which is the way we want them. And now we want to figure out the cross product A cross B. So again, we do the magnitude first. It is going to be, well, I'll just write this out. This is going to be 5 times 10 times the sine of 110 degrees. That's the easy part. Uh, we work this out. We get 46.98. What about our direction? Okay. So you guys, try to figure out what the direction is. Remember, we're doing A cross B. What do you mean by up? Yeah, out of the board. We put our fingers along A. We curl them so they point towards B. My thumb has got to be coming out of the board. Okay? If I had my palm the other way around, so I had them along A, and then I tried curving my fingers to point to B, it's not going to work. It's pointing in the wrong direction. So I've got to have my hand like this, so this is coming out of the board. So my direction is out of the board. Now, if you want a symbol that represents out of the board or out of the page, it's just like that. So you can imagine that this is the, the tip of your arrow that's coming straight out. So this is like the point coming out at you. Okay. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, the weird thing about the cross product is, of course, that it only exists in three dimensions. So we'll just say 
cross product only makes sense in three dimensions. Okay, so now let's take a look at how you would do this if you were given uh, algebraic vectors. So you've got a vector u, and we'll represent this as um, just like we did before, u1, u2, u3, where those are the components of our, our u vector. And we've got vector v, v1, v2, v3. Our cross product, u cross v, is given by, well, a very long, very complicated expression here. Okay? But there's a way that you can remember it. So I'll just write it out in all of its gory detail here. u2 times v3 minus u3 times v2. That's our x component. u3 v1 minus u1 v3 is our y component. And then our z component is u1 v2 minus u2 v1. Like I said, long and complicated. Okay. Here's the way that I remember this, how to do this. Again, this is the way I was taught. Take your vector. You want to make a little table here. Give yourself three columns. IJK. Okay. Underneath IJ and K, write the components for our two vectors. So for u, I would put u1, u2, u3, okay? My ith component, my jth component, and my kth component. Under, for my v, I'd put v1, v2, and v3. I'm going to add a third column, sorry, a fourth column, which is another copy of i, u1, v1. How does this help us? If I want the ith component, okay, I'm just going to pause for a second. Has everybody got this down? Because this is something you have to watch in order for it to make sense. Okay? If you want the i component, what you're going to do is you are going to go down on an angle and you're going to do this times this and then you're going to subtract this times this. So u2 times v3 minus v2 times u3. Okay? So you're going down like this and then up like this. Okay? If you want to do your jth component, again, you go down on an angle. It's going to be u3 times v1 minus v3 times u1. v3, u1. Okay. If you want to do your kth component, imagine that k is sitting over here. Again, you go down on an angle u1 times v2 minus v1 times u2. Okay? This looks complicated. Memorizing this is complicated too. Okay? Some students say, oh, I just want to memorize this formula and write it out at the top of the test, and they can do that. Okay? 
Strangely enough, I find this easier to do. Okay? So let's take a look at an example of how you would use that little table. And when I do the examples in class, I'm going to use this table here. Okay? So let's look at an example. I got one right here. Surprise, surprise. Find A cross B if A equals 1, 3, negative 1, and B is 2, 1, 5. I'm going to make my table over here. I, J, K. A goes first. It's my first vector. 1, 3, negative 1. B comes next. 2, 1, 5. I add myself a copy of my I column here. 1 and 2. Okay, so that's the table that I'm going to use. So over here, I'm just going to write down the answer as I get it. I know that my answer is going to be a vector. So let's see. I'll just say, and it's going to have three components. First component is I. Let's see. To get I, I have to do 3 times 5, which is 15, minus 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. So 15 minus negative 1. Let's see if I can just, I'll just write this in here. 15 minus negative 1. Okay. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to give myself a lot more room now. I didn't think I was going to do it this way. So this would be 15 minus negative 1. Okay. And then let's do our J component next. I'm going to go down on the angle here. I got negative 1 times 2. So that's negative 2 minus 5 times 1, which is 5. My k component, okay, imagine I'm out front here. I'm going to do 1 times 1, which is 1. Subtract 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay. And then I just simplify these components. So 15 um, minus negative 1 gives me 16. Negative 2 minus 5 gives me negative 7. 1 minus 6 gives me negative 5. And that gives me my three components. Okay. My final answer, of course, has to be a vector. So I leave these as, uh, as these components here. Okay. Should we try another example here? Or, yeah, let's do one more here. I'll let you guys try this one. 4, 2, negative 3. V is 1, negative 7, 8. Find the cross product U cross V. Well, let's set up our table over here. I, J, K. I want 4, 2, negative 3, 1, negative 7, 8, and another copy of I is another 4 and another 1. And let's start with our I component. So let's see, that's going to be 2 times 8, 16 minus 3 times negative 3 times negative 7, which is 21. So 16 minus 21. My J component is going to be negative 3 times 1. So negative 3 minus 4 times 8, which is 32. And my K component, bring K out front here. 4 times a negative 7 is negative 28. Subtract from that 1 times 2, which is 2. And then I just need to simplify my components here. 
negative 5, negative 35, and negative 30. And I think I'm done. Okay, so last little points here, um, some of the properties of properties of this of the cross product. If I do A cross B, that is equal to negative B cross A. Okay, so it'll have the same magnitude, but it'll be opposite in direction. So this is what we call the anti commutative property. Okay? So the order is important when you're doing cross product. It doesn't matter with dot product, but it does matter with the um, cross product. And um, just so it's it's anti-commutative, it is distributive, which means if I've got A cross B plus C, where A, B, and C are all vectors. I can rewrite this as A cross B plus um, A cross C. Using the standard distributive property. Okay. And in terms of scalar multiplication, if I'm doing some scalar K times A cross B, uh, that's the same as Ka, or K times A cross B, or A crossed with K times B. Okay. So I can multiply by that scalar anywhere I want um, and still get the same answer. Okay. No, it wouldn't. Because it is, why doesn't it distribute? It distributes because um, you would have to do the vector multiplication before you did the scalar multiplication, if right. you think about it. Okay. But yeah, you, you wouldn't have k times this vector times crossed with k times this vector, because that would give you another factor of k in there. Okay. So, but you can do it, like it says here, with whichever vector first. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it's easier to do it in the inside and sometimes it's easier to do it at the very end. Okay?